You're listening to Power Producers Shop Talk, where we are refining and redefining the sales game by equipping you with the tools you need to differentiate yourself in the marketplace. Well, it's like when we audit the mod with Magic and give them the action items that they're going to use to lower their total cost of risk. Tactical skills that will help you provide deliverable value to your clients and prospects. Technology is not an expense. It's an investment. Look at what ThinkHR has done for our clients and even our team. It's an amazing product, and I'm so thankful we have that. And action items that you can provide to take your prospects and clients to the next level. Things are changing for us in 2021. Not all big business anymore. Now that we have Cover Wallet on our team, it's amazing that we're going to be able to write small business profitably. This is Power Producer Shop Talk. Production redefined. Are you ready to feel the power? Hey, everybody. Welcome to Power Producers Shop Talk. And we are continuing our series on CRM with the one, the only, the man, the myth, the kayak fishing legend, (laughs) which is only secondary to his skills as a CRM guy, Mr. David Lefevre. There you go. Who is, who is our man <laughs> and the guy that anchors the team down here at, at Florida Risk Partners. And today I want to get into a couple things because there's a lot of things inside the insurance industry. And it's probably good before we get too much into functionality and, and deep dive into this stuff. There's stuff that works out of the box. And then there's stuff that's fully customizable. And I know there are agents out there who are trying to figure out which system is going to work for me and we always say and we we have said in prior episode or episodes that the crm that you need to get is the one that's going to work for you but you know i know david you probably don't have as much background or knowledge on the the pre-packaged products that we have in the insurance industry because you live in the hubspot salesforce world but you know there are some advantages. You know we have companies like Insured Mine or Agency Zoom or Better Agency that an agency can buy on a monthly basis, and it's going to give them some better than average functionality to do basic tasks right out of the box. So I want to make sure everybody that's listening to this understands that ain't what we're talking about. Okay. Mm-hmm. Those are all good systems. They all have their place. And I, you know, I have absolutely nothing against any of them by any stretch. I mean, some of my best friends in the industry, you know, developed better agency. But that's not where I'm going for now because as much as I love them, they're not ready for my agency yet. And the people that were our, that are our audience want to hear that, right? And so We're going to talk about what we're doing here, and there may be a day down the road, and I think that that's coming probably sooner than later with how quickly that product's developing, that it will be right for my agency, and at that time, I'm going to have a decision I'm going to have to make. But until that happens, we're going to continue to double down on HubSpot, which is what what has gotten us uh, to where we are right now. So Mm -hmm. we're going to talk to people about those CRMs that I call – fully customizable or extremely customizable, maybe not fully, that you can pick and choose what you want to do and make it do what you want to do. Extreme sort of CRM. You, yeah. That's, that's what how, we got. That's what we got to title this one. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you know, I think that a lot of times agency owners are looking at the price tag again, they're, they're looking with a scarcity mindset as opposed to an abundance mindset. Mm -hmm. Um, I understand based on, you know, how much I have invested and I use the term invested intentionally into this process that, um, you know, this is a long-term play for me and I'm going to have a return, but you have to realize, you know, when you're when you're making these decisions as an agency principal, it's not like you're going to dump a bunch of money into a CRM system and then a month later you've already got your money back. Um, right. You're going to have to look at other things. And so it could be a few things. Number one, how much is this going to make me? Number two, how much will it save me? But not necessarily in dollars as far as the the software is, but in efficiency. Time, how much right? more? Yeah, how much more efficient is my team going to operate? 
am I able to automate tasks that could actually keep me from having to hire people? Not so that we can replace the client experience, but so that we can enhance the client experience and make it better for everybody because we have those tools. And I mean, that's the way that I look at it. And that's sort of how things have been set up for us. But there's four of them out there that I think that a lot of people are familiar with. Uh, Salesforce, HubSpot, Infusionsoft, and then one that's really kind of out on its own, and that's Zoho CRM, which is a customizable CRM if you can figure out how to customize it. Yeah. And uh. you know, and it's cheap, right? So I don't think that I, I, I don't think that uh, you have to necessarily buy an out of the box solution because of the price tag gap between what you can get, let's say, an agency Zoom that's from what I understand, like seventy-five to a hundred dollars a month, versus Zoho CRM, which you can get for thirty-five dollars a month per user, and then customize it and make it do exactly what you want it to do because um, you can. And I and I know this because there's people in Killing Commercial that are doing it right now and and have had a lot of success with it. So that's what I want to talk about a little bit today. Today, David is. Kind of what what kind of customizations, what kind of things should we as agency principals be looking for? And if you're a producer listening to this, this is great ammo for you to go back to your boss and say, hey, talk to me. You know, these are the things we should be doing because I know these work in agencies out there. So if, if you were looking to go into an agency based on what you know now, two and a half years later, I tell people all the time when I talk about David Lefever coming into Florida Risk Partners, and I, I, I tell them, look, you need to use this guy if you can, because the learning curve is gone. He learned to shave on my face, you know? <laughs> so, you know, he knows the CRM, but, and, and it's obviously my face and not uh, Kyle's over Don't here. Don't even today, come near me. <laughs> Uh, goodness. Are you even in insurance anymore? I mean, I'm <laughs> waiting to see you like be the next guy on the front of the brawny paper towel. COVID <laughs> beard, man. That's the COVID beard. <laughs> He's got COVID living in that beard the way it looks right now. Yeah, right, dude. Shit is or pristine. maybe you're just rooting for the lightning. That's what it is. You've been growing it's, it's it since a, the beginning of the season, yeah, right? Yeah, it's a playoff beard from so. last year's playoffs. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's majestic is what it is. You guys are jealous. Oh, Lord. Well, you know, David, I appreciate it. Thanks for all the kind words. Um, well, first thing I want to mention is that Infusionsoft is now called Keep. So they've changed their, they were bought out, they changed their name. Uh, you, you can still see both things out there, but basically they're now Keep. What um, a terrible name. It's yeah. stupid, <laughs> stupid name. I'm so glad you said that. Right? K-E-A-P. But, um, you know, what all of them have, in common is they're all extremely customizable and um whereas i can't speak to some of the the pre-built you know insurance agency platforms that are out there but you know if if you want to make your business fit their technology then that's great you can you can do that but but realize there may be things that you do that you're going to have to change simply because their system's not set up to be able to work the way that you work. And you'll well, have to Well, I think that's switch, a very right? unique point, too, for for middle market, okay? Mm -hmm. Where we're at is not where the lion's share of insurance agencies across the country are, okay? We're, we're in um, different territory. We're competing against publicly traded brokerages and, and, and you know, household names and things like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I want to be careful in, in how I how I frame this because I, I don't want anything anybody out there thinking I'm saying anything at all negative about, you know, right. those prepackaged mm -hmm. products because those have been developed around that Main Street agency that has nothing right now. It's the, the heavy personal line shop that's got some small commercial and, you know, automated cross-sell campaigns and you know creating lists of people who buy this product but don't have these things in your agency that you can market to and all of that they work absolutely perfect because those agencies are a lot of them outside of the culture inside the agency and the people they are pretty much the same in, in many respects but when you start doing you know middle market and risk management type accounts that's not the case and it's mm -hmm. a different marketing message 
um, when you're trying to get to a CFO of a $50 million company than it is when you're trying to get to uh, Sally Jones, the CFO of a $50,000 a year house, right? Mm-hmm. Well, and you're doing account-based selling. You're, you're, not Sorry, just doing, you're not just doing one-to-one selling, right? So you're really trying to close accounts. So you're trying to make sure that you capture all as many people as you can that are in that decision-making circle out of prospect um, and gathering that information and making sure that you have those names, those contacts, those emails, because you may not always be able to get in and talk to the CFO, um, but you know you might be able to get in and talk to you know, an accounting manager um, who to, you know, can then refer you up or, you know, you're, can, can, can give you a good reference by the time you do get in front of the CFO. So you're really doing account-based selling. And, and that's, that, that's how I look at it at least. But, you know, when you're talking about the HubSpots, the Keeps, uh, slash Infusionsoft, Zoho, and all these completely customizable platforms, it really boils down to what data do you need to do the work you want to do? And how does your, how do you, you know, you can make the software work to enhance your current business process and sales process versus having to rebuild a sales process based upon the software. Now that's nothing new. I mean, this is, this is basically software 101. At the end of the day, you've always had a choice whether you were using, you know, act to, to manage your contact and sales back in the day, you know, well, how do we do this? Well, you've got to change the way you do sales to accommodate the software. And that's not always acceptable, nor is it going to end up being profitable. And you might find out a year or two down the road that it just isn't going to work and you are going through that loop again. So these platforms gives you the ability to add whatever you want, sync whatever you want, uh, you know, whether you're wanting to focus on workers' comp dates, whether you're wanting to sync up with a uh, agency management system in some way, shape, or form, you know, you want policy information or it doesn't matter to you have policy information, you don't need it, you don't put it in there. Um, you know, they have mobile uh, uh, phone apps that allow you to, you know, access your data through mobile phone and manage your clients through the mobile phone. But, you know, they're really developed around trying to support uh, uh, a, you know, a, a corporate marketing and a corporate sales organization, which is, you know, overkill for a lot of people, but it really depends. If you want a customized, I don't want to change my business. I don't want to change my processes. I want to build something that's going to improve it, what I do, instead of having to change what I do. Um, that's really the, you know, that, that is, that is the key factor for deciding on whether to go into these platforms. But you, like you said, David, when you do, you need to be looking at it for, you know, how am I saving money in terms of hours, man hours and labor, or am I able to improve the sales that I make? So instead of, you know, closing, you know, five new clients last month, am I able to add a client every month on average? you know, and, and basically pay for the software and then some, and that's great. That's what you want to be able to do. And that's how you could look at how you're paying for it. So obviously, you know, if somebody's going to choose to go down that road of customizing their own CRM, that can be a little bit overwhelming. I mean, I was involved. A horrible in a, idea yeah. for me to decide, Hey, I am going to go customize, yeah. customize my own CRM. I have no clue what I'm doing. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, so like where, you know, where should somebody start when, when they're, you know, kind of trying to go down this road? Like, like what, like well, what's the first yeah, thing? And, and you and I actually had the same kind of question. Let me frame it just a little okay. bit differently. Um, you know, number one, outside of hiring David Lefevre, which I would highly recommend, and I'll give you his contact information at the end of this. Um, you know, what I would tell you is, and where I think I see most people fall short, number one, you, you, know, you need to know what the data is that you need, right? And I mean, mm-hmm. we have a podcast that's releasing on Monday with Ryan Deeds that's probably one of the favorite, one of my favorite podcasts that we did. Just Number one, I don't know what's going on inside that guy's head at any (laughs) given time. Like, he is just – 
I bet he like all four walls of his office are a whiteboard. That's I mean, that's what I have the feelings going on where he's just mapping stuff in just like you want to know what Ryan wants for Christmas, a big box of data with a red ribbon on it. Give him some data. He loves data, <laughs> data as guy. much as my son. Yeah, as much as Ethan loves Fabuloso, Fabuloso. Ryan Deeds loves data. But <laughs> That being said, you got to know what the data is that you want. But more importantly, not not necessarily more importantly, but the other thing is, and where I think, yeah, what's your process for using it, right? Mm -hmm. And so we've done podcasts on the sales process and understanding the stages of that and all of those things. And to me, I'm I'm just interested. I mean, to me, if I'm, and we're not even getting into like the marketing and the service aspect. I'm just talking about straight CRM so that you can take clients or prospects and leads and suspects and all of that and watch how they migrate through your system, you got to have the system set up. Otherwise, you're customizing nothing. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, there, there's a uh, uh, – think, think of a couple different layers. One is I need my core data about what am, what am I capturing? What do I need to know about the people and the companies? You know, that, that I mean, that's really where it starts because you need that information. I need to know we've got Bob Smith, that he's the VP – of, of finance that he works for ABC company. Here's his phone number. Here's his email address, you know, and uh, he, you know, then I need to know about the company, you know, where are they at, how big are they, you know, all the things that you need to know to be able to talk intelligently to Bob when that time is when you get that opportunity. All right, um, stop for one second, because salespeople, this is something that you have got to do that you probably aren't. We all suck at it, but it's the basic, one of the most basic things you can do when you're in a meeting. And here you go. You ready? Take notes, period, yeah. right? Take notes because the CRM is so much more valuable. I mean, David's giving you good information, but when I worked with the very first business development manager that I ever worked with, which that's a nice way to say telemarketer on steroids, the reason she was so effective was because of all of the personal information she had. And so that's one of the reasons why I bought this thing, and I'm not advertising for them. They're not paying me to talk about this, but that's why I bought this Remarkable, right? Now I don't have to worry about going in with my legal pad, taking notes, and then wondering what happens to those notes. I mean, I've got le copious amounts of legal pads everywhere that have million dollars. Dude, idea I've got dollar three ideas right here, and I was just about to say, I'm glad you brought this up because we're out of legal pads at Loose. There we <laughs> so. go. Well, maybe I just need to buy you where's a the, Remarkable as where's well. The, where's the you petty know? cash? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, but the deal is now I can go in and I can take my notes, and with a single button, I can sync them to the cloud, and they'll automatically be there every single time. So when I need to go back, I have a workflow that I'm developing for myself. Go to the new business business appointment, learn as much about Bob as I can when I'm talking to him. I want to know about his wife, his kids, what they do for fun, all of this other stuff while we're building rapport. Sometimes we have these conversations and we view them to be superficial. I happen to think that's probably the most important part of the entire sales meeting because you got to find the common ground so you can relate to these people on an individual basis. And so now I can take this thing, I can put it in, I can sync it to the cloud, and then my workflow can be when I get back after my appointments or my marketing drops or whatever, at the end of the day, I can take and pull that up and have my notes on each, my note sheet on each person. And I can immediately either just take that file and attach it to the contact record in HubSpot, or I can sit down and type it out and maybe add and embellish on it um, with other thoughts that I had as we were having the conversation. Mm -hmm. But if you're not taking notes when you're in these meetings, you are leaving a huge part of CRM out. And that's where you really are able to win because you know, you made the mention about ACT. You know, when, when I was working with Marlene, my, my business development manager back in the day, that's what she had. She had like mm -hmm. a 25-year-old ACT database. It, it was Windows sick. 98. Yeah. She had everything, <laughs> everything. Yeah. She knew pets' names, kids' names, sports where they played, where they went to church, what their favorite restaurant was. You know, mm -hmm. if they had health issues or something because, hey, you know, I can't deal with this right now. I'm going through a little bit of a health problem. It, Okay, great. Boom. Guess what? That went into ACT. Hey, right. you know, last time we talked, you were dealing with some stuff. I'm actually glad to hear that you're on the phone. Tell me how that worked out. Is everything good with you? Blah, 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 blah. But that's what you mm. use it for. Again, it goes back to get the CRM that you're going to use. And that's a huge place that I think every single one of us has a gap in, me included. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, nobody can remember everything. And, you know, depending upon, you know, how how many prospects you're out constantly talking to over time, it's going to add up. 
because you're yeah. going to be working somebody and they're going to buy from somebody else and they're going to sit idle for a year or six months before you can really talk to them again. And in the meantime, they're not top of mind. You're off doing other things. And, but when the, when the, when the bell comes up and the task comes on that says, Hey, I need to call Bob again, you need to refresh your brain. And the only place you're going to refresh your brain is either try to find those legal pads and go back through the stack that you've got, you know, that's three inches tall, or if you put it in the CRM, it's right there and you'll be able to refresh your memory. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it is, uh, you know, it's data storage, but I want to, well, I want to hey, shift shift real quick though if i could on that because before I wanna... you do that though i have one more thing that's practical to this and mm -hmm. here's the deal guys maybe you're awesome at taking notes and you take notes on everybody i mean you write war and peace on every freaking prospect appointment that you're in but you know where you do suck you suck at trade shows trade shows you get copious amounts of business cards you stick them in your pocket what do you do with them well, they probably stay in your pocket if you're like me, and half the time they come out a mangled mess because your wife doesn't check your pockets, although mine does because she finds <laughs> money in there a good bit of the time and then keeps it. But, you know, what I'm getting at is it goes back to process again. You know, we, I talked about me buying the Remarkable so I can take notes and, and get my stuff into the system. I had to develop a process around that. If you're in a niche industry, my good friend Josh Gurley and Andrew Deering have truck and trailer makers, um, you know, that they go and they deal with these guys in their niche. And they go to the trade show and the trade shows in the different states to represent themselves. And they pay a lot of money to do that. They have to buy the booth and all of this other stuff. And then they get all these business cards and what happens with them. And Josh would be the first person to tell you he has a stack of them. And they try and call everybody and they do this and they do that. But what happens if you had a way right here? I get the business card. Boom. Take a picture of it. HubSpot for us, and I can only talk about our product, has a business card scanner as part of their application where I can do it. And boom, now my contact record's created and mm -hmm. I have a workflow. So if, even if I'm not going to do it, the second that I go back to my hotel room, I can have that business card go in and have a, a, a workflow set up or a sequence or whatever we want to call it in HubSpot that's going to assign a task for me to go in and make sure that I've filled in that contact. I can add conversation notes, whatever else. But if I take that picture every single time boom hey guess what else it does it's posturing if you're meeting with the prospect and you get their card and the first thing you do is yank your cell phone out and take it in there say hey i got to make sure i get this in every single time because it's important that we met today and i want you to know you are going to hear from me so i just let me scan your card quick and now we can finish yeah, our they're, conversation. they're usually wondering they're going oh, that's great i've always wanted to do that <laughs> <laughs> and next thing you know, you've got a conversation about your technology and your sales processes and your business, not on, you know, how am I going to sell you insurance? So, mm -hmm. which is what you don't want to have. You don't want to mm -hmm. have that conversation until you're ready to have it. But um, yeah, I mean, that, that, that is, it's all about the uniqueness. So it's, it's interesting because in Salesforce, for example, um, you know, they have a, di there's, they have a lightning dialer and it's an add on, you got to pay for it but it's essentially designed to sit there and allow you to just start dial, 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 dial. You know, if you wanted to call a hundred people in a day, you go, there's my list. And, and you literally sit down, punch numbers and dial. And, and depending upon what happens, you just check, 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 check. And you tell it, I reached them. I didn't reach them. And it, it automates that process significantly making a difference in your productivity. So every little you know, every one of these applications, you know, there's if, if, if it's not built in, it usually has an add on that can help you be productive in the area that you want to be productive in. And so if you've got a, a company where you're, do, you're just doing a lot of dialing for dollars and that's what you do and that's part of your business process, you know, there you go. There, there's a tool that is available that may not be available on the built in stuff. I don't know because I don't I don't I don't use them, but again cost savings right how much time does that save you how how per, much more productive does it make you or make your team to be able to to be able to use a tool like that and acquire new leads new prospects and close more deals well i mean so, listen there's a there, in, in going with the dialer thing and i want to 
I want to keep this within uh, sort of the confines of how long we let our shop talk episodes go, and we'll just stop and pick it up in the next episode. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, there's a lot of really cool tools around that that leave ringless voicemails. I think one of them's like Sly Broadcast or something like that. What happens if you come up with a really good generic phone script for a trade show? For example, I'll, I'll ride that pony as long as we're talking about it. We come up with a, a, a really good script for a, a sly broadcast ringless voicemail drop so that at the end of the day at the trade show, you have everybody in your CRM, and then boom, you can send something out that says, hey, I just want to touch base. This is David Carruthers from Florida Risk Partners, and it was great meeting you at the at the trade show that we were at today. And I just want to let you know I really appreciate the conversation that we had. I'm not going to bug you. I'm a low-key dude, but I would like to follow back up, and I'm going to be touching base with you in the next little bit. Um, you know, if you're interested in talking sooner than when uh, I may get back, you can catch me again at the booth tomorrow, or you know, you can go here to this link and schedule time with me directly on my calendar, and we can have a conversation that's convenient for you when you get back into the office. I didn't make that about any one person. I didn't, you know, that could go to anybody. So if I met 50 people, all 50 people could get that exact same message and realize, wow, this guy's really on his A game. He got my card. He scanned it in. He's already called me. He wants to talk further. I'm already such a leg up on everybody else in the insurance game just because I talk to them more in 24 hours than their agent has in six months. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, I mean, I think there's a lot of, a lot to that. So you weren't wanting to go in another direction right before yeah. I went off on my tirade there. Mm-hmm. Um, Absolutely. Do we need to reserve that for the next episode and maybe kick off with that? Well, how much time we, do we have left on this one? We're um, about negative nine minutes. Yeah, <laughs> let's, let's go ahead and reserve that. But I will, I will just say what it is, and that is, you know, we talked about the data about the people and the companies, but we need to talk about pipelines and processes. Yeah. Yeah, so absolutely. and and how I that think that's applies. Great. That's a whole episode in its of in and of itself. So yeah. we're gonna wrap up, people. His name is David Lefever. His company is Sales Power. S A L E S P W R dot com. Got to buy a vowel if you want to go to somebody <laughs> else. But if you're going to him, it's Sales Power. P W R dot com, and he can hook you up. Salesforce, HubSpot. I'm not gonna talk about anybody else because I don't know. Anybody? Any other systems that you're that you work with that you're you're familiar with? Uh, yep, Entreport, and I've uh, worked around with Keep quite a bit. So well, I should um, I should know and a few others that I that I've probably forgotten more than I remember, but uh, they're all generally the same. They're easy to work in once you kind of get past the the general how, where the buttons are. They all do the same thing. Good deal. Cool. All right, everybody, have a great weekend, and we will catch you next Friday on the next episode of Shop Talk, where we're going to be talking about processes and procedures surrounding the CRM. See ya. You've been listening to Power Producers Shop Talk. You can follow us at the Power Producers Podcast on Facebook and Instagram. And if you want to take your game to the next level, check out our commercial insurance training course at killingcommercial.com or visit Amazon to pick up a copy of our international best-selling book, The Extra Two Minutes.